Uh, thank you for speaking to Security Review. Nice having you with us today. Chris, thanks for having me. Uh, we would like to start with a brief about your presence at the event. What are you focusing on this year? So we focus on promoting our platform. So we at Opsworth, we focus on critical infrastructure protection. And protecting critical infrastructure is really hard. It's a very, very complex network. It requires very specific technologies and also training, training academy. So what we have, actually, we have the entire platform. We put it here in our booth. So everybody can see how the platform can interject the network, the critical infrastructure network. And also we are promoting our technologies and also our academy, how to train the cybersecurity professionals in critical infrastructure to have like pretty much the knowledge they need to defend against advanced cybersecurity attack and also meet compliance mandates. Okay. With an evolving threat landscape, what sort of challenges do companies face and how are you helping them overcome those? So, um, we see a lot of AI-based threats. You know, AI, I mean, it's, it's whenever we, we look at AI, at cybersecurity, AI is a double-edged sword. You know, the attacker says AI, defender says AI. So which AI is going to win? Every time you're coming with a new AI model to go and prevent AI-based attacks, then a new, a new model is going to come up to going to break your model. So we have a different approach to that. We have a very deterministic approach. We are regenerating the data. So all of the data flow to your organization is being regenerated by our uh, by our tool. We have some AI-based tools to go and help with uh, fire type detection and so on. However, the the essence that we provide to critical infrastructure regenerate the data to prevent AI bone threats. Now, uh, our platform again is focused on critical infrastructure. Another issue that uh, critical infrastructure face is a very deterministic prevention or deterministic approach to cybersecurity defense. For that also, we have optical firewalls. Optical firewalls are kind of way stronger than a firewall because what they do, it's, 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 it's like a di it's like either a diode or an optical uh, cable that guarantee a one-way communication. So this is another example of uh, our platform that is uh, very unique, uh, I would say, for cyber defense for critical infrastructure or cyber defense in general, and also specifically uh, for uh, the region, uh, it's for the region and, and, and in general, yes. Okay. When it comes to traditional firewall approaches, what sort of gaps have you seen and how are you helping fill those gaps? So the firewalls is a very, I would say, ancient technology. It was invented more than 40 years ago. You know, 40 years ago, people came to the office. There were no laptops very much, you know? Everything was at, at the office. Also, uh, 40 years ago, uh, Wait, did you have Google? You didn't have Google, you have Yahoo. So firewalls were designed for unencrypted traffic. Okay, so now since then a lot changed, you know. So uh, the network is very distributed. The office uh, pretty much there is walking from home and walking from the office, right? So this happened also the entire network traffic uh, is encrypted now. You're not going to port 80 to go to Yahoo, you're going to port 443, HTTPS, everything is there. And so most of your traffic is encrypted. Now, some would say, yes, you can turn on encryption at firewall. So it's a very resource intensive proposition. So, uh, and so this is kind of the, the a big gap with the, the firewalls that we have today. Now, some would say, hey, let's put together a AI on the firewalls to detect abnormality. Although again, AI is double-edged salt. The same AI model you're going to put on the firewall, the attackers will put another AI model to go and, and actually penetrate that. Now, there's another big issue with firewalls. There are uh, more than 3,000 vulnerabilities of firewalls. Actually, more than 400 on Cisco, more than 350 on Palo Alto, more than 350 on Checkpoint. And some of them are really severe. And sometimes, actually, to have a firewall, actually is less secure than no firewall just because of the zero days. Some of the zero days, you have an admin to the specific firewall. It's much easy to hack to the network because you have a firewall. Uh, a second big issue with firewalls is uh, the firewall rules. You know, the, the average amount of firewall rules for, for large organizations is more than a thousand. And, and firewall rules is a problem because, you know, every firewall rule is punching holes. And you have a rule after a rule after a rule, after a rule, and then configuration mistakes happens. You know, on the average, in a, a big organization add like seven rules a week. So again, a mistake is going to happen to a point that, you know, something happens. So out of, I would say, more than 3,000 uh, breaches 
to firewalls, uh, roughly 50% are because of firewall rules mistakes. So again, firewalls are outdated, you know, in many cases cannot support all of the encrypted traffic, all of that. Second, they are prone to zero days. And also you have the firewall rule issues, right? So to a point that if you're really looking to protect critical infrastructure, firewalls and traditional firewalls are big liabilities. For that, actually what we do, we have optical firewall. Optical firewall is not a 100% replacement for a firewall, right? Though if you're looking for a deterministic approach to protect your critical asset, air gap, isolate, isolate it. If you need specific data coming out of that, segregate the data and put it on an optical firewall out. If you need to replicate a database between your enterprise network and your critical infrastructure, you can also do it using a diode. Again, it's not a full replacement, though we have like, uh, I would say in many cases for critical infrastructure protection, uh, deploying uh, an optical firewall or a diode is, is the way to go. Okay. There's a lot of digital transformation happening in this region, especially with new markets opening up like Saudi, for example. Um, what sort of risks are rising because of this? So with digital transformation, the more you automate, the more you're prone to risk. So for example, big deal is using AI tools and sending data to AI, so you're losing PII. So this is one uh, uh, one area. Uh, whenever it comes to digital transformation, also what we see, you need to bring data to the critical network and bring data out of the critical network. So it's a, it's a full process because if you can't kind of air gap, you need to create a process how you're going to bring the data, whether it's uh, workable data like documents or executable to go and update the critical network. So uh, for that, we, have a, uh, we are actually offering a full transformation from a physical kiosk to deposit the data to, and then you are actually uh, transferring the data over an optical firewall into like a storage device or the endpoint within the critical network. And we're doing it kind of with pretty much all of our platform and how we are kind of we, we are providing some uh, solutions around there. Uh, thank you for speaking to us. Nice having you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.